We're going to look at some tips and tricks for troubleshooting identity injection issues with NetIQ Access Manager. First thing we need is we need a policy and the policy is responsible for injecting information used for single sign-on purposes to the backend application. It can go into a basic auth header, it can go into a custom header, or it can go as part of the query string. If we take a look at this sample policy here, I have a, a number of different things I'm injecting into custom headers. I'm looking at X title, and I'm going to inject the LDAP mail, uh, LDAP title. I'm going to inject maybe a user's risk into the backend application. So we need to have a policy. And then we have a protected resource where the policy is enabled. And what's often happened is a policy is created, but it's not actually enabled. So that policy must be enabled for that protected resource. And we have this protected resource here. Essentially what's happening is when a request comes into slash form fill PHP info, we're going to actually evaluate this particular policy. We're going to have uh, the Apache. Apache is responsible for injecting the, the custom header, the query string, etc., to the backend application, but it needs to talk to the ESP to retrieve those attributes. So we have two interfaces that we need to be aware of as far as troubleshooting is concerned. If we go to the troubleshooting settings, the first one we do is we look at the access gateway, and this is responsible for the troubleshooting options specific to Apache. I have a lot of options in here, but these are the key ones that we need for identity injection. The first one here is debug headers equals on. What this does is it's going to generate every response coming back from the access gateway will have an XMAG header, and the XMAG header will have a lot of useful information about uh, what happened during the processing of the request, and we'll have a look at that in a minute's time. <clears throat> There's a log level directive set to info, which actually defines how much logging are we going to do in the error log file. We'll have a look at that in a minute as well. And then we have the dump header and the dump response headers. And what, they, what these two headers are doing is they're going to dump the HTTP headers associated for the, with the request going from the browser to AG, AG to web server, response back from the web server to AG, and the response from the AG to the browser. And the dump facility header, this, this is for performance reasons. We're going to use syslog, syslog level logging to do so. We also have, because we mentioned earlier on, that because the ESP is involved, you can go to the IDP, inf IDP configuration, click on logging, and under logging here, we have web services consumer and web services provider. These two flags here are responsible for logging attribute query information into the ESP. And that's gonna be very important if we're not retrieving attributes that we expect to be getting. So we enable those changes and that'll write out to the Catalina out file. So now let's take a look at a sample request. We're gonna go and access a protected resource over here, the protected resource that I had enabled there. I hit my, I have to authenticate first, so I'm going to log in there as myself. And I will go on to the back end and there is my PHP info. And in here you can see, for example, I have uh, the X, title, uh, these are all custom custom parameters that I've injected as part of the script. And I thought I had an X title. There is my risk, there's my X title there. So that's what we saw earlier on. Now, more importantly than that, if we take a look at the actual request and response, let's take a look at the XMAG header that we had down here. So here is the XMAG header. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'll cut and paste that and I'll show the importance or how much useful information is available from that header. So over here, control U, control V. So the XMAG header has a number of different fields. The first one is the uh, device ID of the access gateway that we hit. So if we're in a clustered environment, uh, we'll be able to figure out which AG actually responded to our request. Then we have uh, the last eight bytes of the uh, IPCQ ZX03 cookie. That's the session cookie in the access gateway. And then extremely importantly, this is the, the next one. The third field in is the event log, the event ID. So we can actually take that event ID and we can go to the, uh, the error log file or the HTTP headers on the access gateway and take a look at that. So I'll open that up. The error log file was two, three, 268. So if I search for 23 and 23268, I should see my request in here. 
And sure enough, there is the request. It's a request for formfillphpinfo.php. It comes in, it's identified that it's a restricted URL, so it requires authentication. This is the name of the protected resource. I have an any contract enabled, and that's the contract that I authenticated as. So everything's fine. This is just standard processing. Now let's go down to the point where we look at the identity injection quest. So this is the information we're looking for in the auth header, and we can see everything we've injected in here. So we see we're injecting information into XV mail, X risk, et cetera. And then that is just before we send the request over to the backend server. So I'm going to send the request over to the backend server. Here we go, connecting to this backend web server, sending the request over to the backend web server. So from the error log file, we know that we've come in, we've uh, evaluated the identity injection policy, we've retrieved attributes, we've built the custom header, we've sent it off. Now, what if we still can't single sign on. Now we can actually go and look at the HTTP headers. And from the HTTP headers, we can sh also track that session ID in there, 23268. And we'll actually see the requests going in. So this was a request here. C request is request from browser to uh, AG. And this is the request that we got in from the browser to AG. Nothing there that's useful for identity injection. However, the request from the AG to the web server, to web server, it becomes important because this is where identity injection kicks in. And in here, you can see X female, X risk, X title with all the values in there. So if you send the right header, but you're missing a particular attribute, then what you have to do is you have to figure out why the ESP didn't actually resolve that attribute. And that's where our ESP log file setting came in. So if we now look at the OPT Novel NAM, I'm going to look at the MAG logs on the ESP. Oops, MAG. And I'm going to do a get attribute request. So what I'll do is I'll go down to the bottom of the file. I'm going to scroll back and I'm going to look at our famous number, event ID number there, 23268. And hopefully I should see. And there we go. There is the status response where it tells me it's injecting information into the various headers there. I can actually track back again further and I should be able to see the actual request come in. So this is the actual request coming in here. Now, what's interesting here is that for some of the attributes, you'll see this message here, throwing data unavailable. So in this case here, I was actually injecting, I believe I was injecting the risk score and the risk score was blank. Well, the risk score was blank because it never actually got a risk and it may not have gotten a risk because I didn't actually evaluate or run a risk-based policy in parallel with this. So one of the key things when you're missing information is to look for this data unavailable message and find out why that's unavailable.